name is Peggy Appthorpe, and I am currently working as AmeriCorps with uh, Conservation Nebraska. Conservation Nebraska is a nonprofit, nonpolitical organization that is dedicated to keeping Nebraska's environment healthy and our residents um, healthy as well. We do that in a number of ways, including having educational programs like the one that we're having today. We also sponsor a number of events um, around the state. So if you're interested in learning more, please visit our website um, and you can learn about some of the upcoming events as well. We're really happy to have with us today Sarah Mason and Ralph Martin from Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. Um, Sarah is an environmental health educator and she has a, a vast array of experience in, around the world really. She's been in Africa and many other locations. And Ralph is a senior environmental health specialist with Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. A few housekeeping items before I turn the program over to them. You are muted and your video is turned off. If you have questions, please put them in the chat box or the Q&A box. And we will have a survey at the end of the program that we would appreciate you taking time to fill out because it helps us with future planning and funding. So I will go ahead and turn the program over to Sarah and Ralph. And thank you again for being here this morning. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Um, thank you to Conservation Nebraska um, for hosting this important conversation. And it is obviously super relevant to us um, after this last year and a half of thinking more about cleaning more than ever before. Um, also, thank you to Aging Partners. Um, this is a great time to be thinking about the home environment. Um, if you yourself are an aging adult, uh, we are all aging, um, but in an older population, it's important to think about your home um, if you're spending more time in it. Um, you've had a lifetime of exposure. Uh, you perhaps have a more complicated um, health risks right now. And so it's important to think about that environmental space. So I'm Sarah Mason. I'm an environmental health educator here at Lincoln Lancaster County Health Department. And I am kind of the communicator uh, to get out and about to visit with folks, but I am not the subject matter expertise. And that's why I'm here with Ralph, um, who is. And um, Ralph oversees, coordinates, and runs Lincoln's Hazardous Waste uh, Center. And we are here as a resource for you, even if you're not in our city county, um, please reach out to us. We want to be a resource and we want to be helpful to you. Um, so we're talking cleaners today, um, but Ralph's knowledge goes well beyond that um, because they're at the Hazardous Waste Center, they're seeing um, automotive products, uh, they're seeing certain kinds of light bulbs, they're seeing really retro chemistry sets that still had mercury in them. Um, so he's got a wide range of experience and most of your q and I'm going to send his way. So uh, we are part of the health department. So I think a lot of people think about the health department, COVID vaccines, um, flu season, that's who we are. We also have an aspect of it that's focused on environmental health. And that's um, thinking about the space around us. So we're pretty good at thinking about our bodies and what we put into them. Are we eating the right foods? Um, to take care of them? Are we getting enough exercise? And that's generally where we stop at public health, but, but we're so much more than that. Um, we are doing that same preventative and upstream thinking when it comes to our environment. So are the cleaning products we're using impacting our indoor air quality? Are they um, going down the drain and impacting aquatic systems down the drain? Um, so that's what we're really focused on. And you see folks, um, our colleagues work in that food realm, water, air, and then we're focused on the waste mm -hmm. side. Um, so that's who we are. And why we care about cleaners is this, it's because they're everywhere. Um, I have my hands resting on a desk that has likely been wiped uh, and still has potentially some residue or the dust that settles can eventually have some of that cleaning product residue. Um, it's in the air I'm breathing, it's everywhere. 
also because we're talking about products that you just purchase at a grocery store, at a Dollar General, um, these products we might start to get a little more careless with. Um, and so it's good to kind of do a, a check and make sure that we're being mindful. Um, I mentioned that we have lots of different pathways to exposure. So we're breathing in this stuff, we're touching it. Um, and so it's, it's just kind of everywhere. One thing that is happening in our realm is that folks are getting more interested in layering on and looking at the synergistic impacts of products. And so that's just beginning to happen and there isn't a whole lot out there yet. And so that's another reason we care about cleaners um, because it probably uh, exposure through the skin of one cleaner probably hasn't been tested against say someone's diabetes medication. So um, it's just something we wanna keep kind of top of mind. Um, thank you for your time, for the gift of being here and paying attention um, and taking a minute to think about your environmental health. Um, if there's anything people love doing more than cleaning, you have evidence that it is thinking about cleaning. So thank you. So the big picture, the takeaway lesson, you forget nothing else, you remember nothing else. Um, I want you to remember, use the right product. That's what we wanna talk about. So just some nuts and bolts, cleaning versus sanitizing versus disinfecting. Um, we probably should spend more time cleaning and that's removing the debris and a little bit less emphasis on um, the disinfecting unless we are dealing with something like mm, a global pandemic uh, where we need to be assured that a certain pathogen is killed. Um, but most of the times our, our health and our immune systems work so that if we're using cleaners, we're golden. Um, I have a toddler at home. When she has bouts of diarrhea though, you can bet that I shift from cleaning and removing debris using something like um, soap and water, detergents, um, vacuuming is considered cleaning, a brush to clean, removing the debris. I shift from that when there's an illness in our family and I'll shift to more of the sanitization or even uh, the disinfecting. And that's where I'm focused on killing the pathogen. Um, and do note that time frame because that time frame of less than 10 minutes um, that is, is something important that if we're not reading the labels on our cleaning products, we might be missing it and we might not be getting the, the good out of it um, when we're trying to disinfect. Um, so in general, we need to focus more as a society on cleaning and a little bit less on disinfecting. Um, we do wanna disinfect in high touch places, bathrooms, and again, if someone's ill. In the kitchen, you wanna be mindful that you're using food grade cleaners, okay? So just take a minute to think, if I'm wiping the counter with this product, what could we possibly be ingesting? Um, particularly for folks who are sensitive um, to the air and changes in indoor air quality, um, we wanna prioritize that cleaning over disinfecting. And one simple, change for that is to shift away from those um, quat cleaners or bleach and instead go to something like hydrogen peroxide. And I'll talk more about hydrogen peroxide and the way it can be used in just a little bit. Um, but that's one way to, to make sure that you're maintaining a good air quality indoors. Um, the other really simple thing that I've shifted to is just choosing fragrance free. Um, cleaning and clean doesn't necessarily have a smell. It's something that's been marketed to us. It's linen fresh, it's mountain breeze fresh, um, but that's not necessarily what clean smells like. Clean might not smell at all, and that's okay. In fact, when we're adding fragrances in, um, you can be adding to um, negative indoor air quality factors. You can be adding little particulates in your air that are hard for your body to work with. So especially if someone, um, if you're someone who does have asthma, it's a great place to bring up environmental health with your doctor and your cleaning practices. Um, you might need to think about masking um, while you clean. You might need to be really careful 
when you do have to disinfect. So get your doctor's input and, and ask them what's best for you. Um, those of us who might not have to deal with asthma, I think it's still a great idea to just keep your indoor air clean. Go fragrance-free, clean uh, more than you disinfect. Ralph, am I missing anything? Anything you want to add nope. so far? Okay. Remember that the uh, the fragrances are typically well, mostly all chemicals added together to create a smell and <clears throat> and formaldehydes and alcohols and other volatile compounds are typically aromatics, all kinds of things. And we can. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So volatile organic compounds are those things that we, that, that are gases that come into the air and they can be, they can be irritants and they can cause problems for us, especially folks like uh, who have breathing and lung difficulties. So um, whether it's that strong fragrance um, or if you've ever done cleaning in a tight room and it's the fragrance, or the product itself, and you're like, I am woozy. I need to open a window. That's that's real. That's volatile organic compounds um, that are impacting you. Is that is that correct? Am I on the right wavelength? Don't do anything that would make it feel ill. Yeah. Excellent. Um, you also have mechanical options, and um, this is hard especially for folks with physical limitations. Um, but if that's not you, then think about mechanical options. So um, in the this, not that, skip dryer sheets. Don't use fabric softener. A lot of those things already have fragrance as well, which we've talked about. Just go with a dryer ball. So um, a lot of places have these for purchase now. They're wool dryer balls. You can make your own out of 100% wool. Um, it takes some time to get it to all stick. Um, I've tried and have eventually converted to the, the purchased ones, um, but it shortens your dryer time too. So save money on your energy bills. Um, and the other beautiful thing at this time of year, hang that clothes out, hang those clothes out. Nothing wrong with that. Um, great way to get them dried out and taken care of. Um, for cleaning, when you're in the scrubbing mode, you're gonna have to add a little more muscle because cleaning is about removing debris. And I think that's why we've often shifted and used more of the all purpose cleaner, which is sometimes a rather intense chemical concoction uh, because it takes away some of the work for us. So some folks might absolutely need that and I don't want to stop you from utilizing that, but I want you to make a safer choice. Um, those of us who can put a little bit of elbow grease into it, let's do it. Let's find something that's scrubby that works really well. Let's find brushes and scrub pads. Um, if you need to add some grit, um, salt is a great way. Again, food grade, I, I put salt in my food. I'm not concerned about cleaning with it. Um, salt is a great way to scrub and get some grit in there if you're having a hard time um, cleaning something off. And then we always get into drain cleaners because uh, I think they have notoriously been uh, pretty harsh. Um, and I think everyone's got stories where they've been told to use it properly or it'll eat away all your pipes or whatnot. Um, and that's because that's what it's, it's meant to do. So I would encourage you take the mechanical route when you can. Um, those lovely little snakes seen there, they take some time, they take some work. Um, but if you're protecting yourself and the environment, um, that environmental health and residential health that are those cornerstones to conservation in Nebraska that Peggy mentioned, it's worth it. It's worth it. Um, so if you want to take the guesswork out, um, the EPA has put together their own label and auditing system. So the EPA created this um, label, this safer choice, and it is to help you choose a product that has lower volatile organic compounds, those gases that we might breathe in. Um, they're looking at uh, pH standards. They measure whether or not 
the, the product actually does what it says it will do. I know that's a big complaint with greener cleaning products, but they just don't work as well. Um, they're also looking at packaging and making sure that um, it's been done in a sensible way. Um, so that's a good bet if you're like, this lady just talked and talked and there are so many rules uh, by the end of this, go with that safer choice. That's, that's a safer option for you and the environment as well. So if you want to make a safer alternative, um, go for it. I, I work, the other hat that I wear around here is uh, on waste reduction. And so I think that's what I love about do-it-yourself cleaners um, is that I might buy a giant jug of vinegar and that's gonna last me. I'm not going through spray bottle after spray bottle um, of cleaners. Um, so I can reduce some of that plastic that I'm using. Um, and, and I also know, hey, for every product that ends up on the shelf, that I have to recycle a plastic bottle. There are hundreds of pounds um, in that production process. So I have really enjoyed it. Um, I also know that it's a lot cheaper for my family to buy. We're saving money because these are uh, easy products to find um, that are generally less expensive than a pre-made cleaner. Um, nonetheless, it is crucial that I still keep in mind basic chemistry. And I'll talk more specifically about that in a little bit um, because something like vinegar, it's still really strong. And if you're not flushing it through your pipes, it's an acid. And so you wanna be mindful about what you're doing with it, even though you made it yourself and there are products around your home. Um, but for our family, we use, we use vinegar a lot. Um, we use the cleanup soap scum. So maybe we've cleaned, um, with soap and water, but there's still soap scum or I'm scrubbing in the shower. Vinegar is my go-to. It's got just that right amount of acid to just take it off, acidity. And it does also, it's not a disinfectant because it doesn't kill um, the 99.9% the .9 of pathogens. Um, but I do know that, hey, generally it's gonna, it's gonna do the trick for us. Now, when somebody's sick, I am gonna kick it up and I'm gonna be mindful to disinfect common touch surfaces. So that's where I use hydrogen peroxide. So I'm talking about something like a 3% concentration um, and the CDC notes, you can use that for a disinfectant um, as opposed to something like bleach. Um, and as long as you've got it on that contact dwelling, that dwell time for about six to eight minutes that it's staying wet, you are in the clear for most things, most pathogens. Um, so like the common cold, hydrogen peroxide is going to take care of it. Um, you don't need anything stronger. You don't need, it's, it's, it's that nut to crack. You don't need a sledgehammer. Um, even, even so, again, back to that basic chemistry, hydrogen peroxide is kind of tricky. There's a reason it tends to come in that brown opaque bottle. And that's because with exposure to sunlight and oxygen, um, Again, I'm not the chemist, but stuff changes and it, it becomes less effective. So um, like at my house, when we have to disinfect, uh, we've just got a spray nozzle put into our hydrogen peroxide bottle um, and that, that does the trick for us. So those of you itching for um, a tool, something to take away from this right now, you can jot it down um, for just an all-purpose cleaner, vinegar and water. Um, if you're working with a really sensitive surface, something you know is really fragile, you're going to want to decrease the amount of vinegar you're putting in it. Um, and don't be afraid to use soap and water. It's amazing what it can do. Maybe change out your brush. Maybe get a scrubby pad. Um, it, it'll do the trick. The other thing you can add is a scouring agent. Um, so that's where baking soda comes in. Um, the thing to note about baking soda and vinegar is I think for a while, we would just always tout those things, put them together. Um, and there are some benefits to it, but once they're mixed, the acid and base of the two components leave you with not a whole lot more than water. So I'm not saying that you should necessarily mix them, um, but they both have their place. So if you're looking to scour, bust out the baking soda, you can use it as like a buffer um, to clean. We'll often do that in our sink every once in a while to get some of that grime out. Um, 
The other thing you can do is you can mix it into a paste. So make it a paste with just a little bit of water and that's gonna take care of you when you're working on tough surfaces like grout and you need it to sit in there and get it clean. So more specifically on the, don't become a mad scientist. Um, when you're doing your DIY cleaners, your do-it-yourself cleaners, um, be careful. These are the never mix components. Um, jot them down, maybe tape them in your cleaning closet so that if you get a wild idea, hey, I think this would work, you can come back to it. Um, bleach and vinegar, bleach and any of those acids are gonna not go well. So you get the chlorine gla gases or um, with bleach and ammonia, you're, you're working with all those chlorine gases and the different forms of that. So it might seem like a good idea. Um, I grew up in the home improvement era with Tim Taylor from Home Improvement always grunting about more power. And so I just want to discourage you from doing that route when you're doing cleaning um, because mixing things together, unless you're a chemist and know what you're doing, can get you in a world of hurt. So maybe your bottle doesn't say ammonia, but you get the idea to mix bleach with it. Well, if you're mixing it with something like a glass cleaner, that's got ammonia in it probably. And so um, you can create those, those dangerous gases. Um, um, as I mentioned before, you also might create something that doesn't work, like the baking soda and vinegar um, for your all-purpose cleaner that gets mixed up together. Um, so do your reading, read up on it. The EPA is a great source for how to clean. The CDC is a great source for how to clean and disinfect. Um, throw up on your list there, bleach and rubbing alcohol. That's where you get chloroform, what we always see in the movies to totally knock you out. Well, it may not knock you out flat on the face, but um, it is going to be an irritant. And, and depending on the size of your room and ventilation, it could have major impacts on your health. So make sure not to mix those. Um, vinegar is a great tool to use in your house. Hydrogen peroxide is a great tool for disinfecting. Do not mix them together. There you get parasitic acid. Um, and so just don't get into your like mad chemist mindset. Um, be thoughtful about what you're doing. Um, so just some general tips. When I got was putting this together, I had a hard time thinking about kind of themes. So there were a bunch of things that just didn't fit anywhere else. And so I'm just gonna hit that um, here. And then I wanna hear your questions. So please, um, let's get to the nitty gritty of practical questions, type them in the chat box and we'll be ready. Um, so clean before you disinfect. So that's getting the debris off first so that your disinfectant can work. Do your soap and water, do your dish soap and water to clean the surface, then come back with your, say, hydrogen peroxide. Keep the surface wet six to eight minutes. Um, and then you've done both cleaning and disinfecting. Um, Careful with products um, as you read. It's hard to distinguish um, when you're looking there at the shelf because there's so much greenwashing. So even non-toxic and biodegradable, before I got into this myself in this position, I would choose those products just based off of that. Um, but you simply can't, there's more to that. So um, biodegrading, you know, it's just breaking it down. Well, what's it breaking it down into? Um, what, what could be a problem with it being broken down into this chemical element and mixing with our uh, wastewater elements, you know? So don't just go by marketing and natural means nothing. So don't, don't just be fooled by that. Be a conscientious consumer and think about what you're getting. Um, Go for things that you can reuse, like wash rags and sponges. When your t-shirt uh, has seen too many days and it's time to cut it up, use it for rags. Um, that's just fine. It's safe to do. Just make sure you're washing them regularly. Um, and I, oh, I forgot this point. I was going to note that in my own experiences with do-it-yourself cleaning. Laundry is one area where 
I tried using just a soap and I have switched back to a detergent. So that's a chemically created um, product instead of a more naturally occurring product because I just couldn't figure out the laundry plan to make that work better. Um, so you're also welcome to put that in the chat uh, if it will help me improve my laundry regimen. Um, know that more is not more. Again, um, back, back to the home improvement, more power, more is not more. I'm gonna do, it says to dilute it one part to one part, but I'm gonna double it because this is really messy. Don't do it. When it was approved, when that product went on the shelf to get approval, it had to go through a process based on the directions they gave you. So read your label and follow the instructions. Um, you're, you're not being a softy by doing that. That's being really smart. Um, so more is not more. Don't mix products that you don't know about. Um, don't layer them on. Don't make them stronger. Um, just go with those directions on the label. Um, ventilation and gloves. Never want to, to discourage people from using them. Um, it's hard to go through product by product and say, use gloves when you're doing this. Don't need gloves for this. So in general, throw on a pair of gloves. Keep a pair of gloves for cleaning um, and make sure that they get cleaned as well with some good soap and water scrub while they're still on um, to get whatever product you just used off. Um, so don't, don't be afraid to use those. It's always helpful to open up a window and get some air moving through the space you're, you're cleaning. Even those safer choice products, they tend to favor lower VOCs, less of those volatile organic compounds in the air. Um, but there are still compounds and, and depending on your health, they may impact your health. And so open up a window when you can. Once you've created some of these do-it-yourself um, cleaners, like your vinegar and your water, label, label, label. If you've created something that's diluted in a certain way, label, label, label. Don't get careless on that. And just because you created it doesn't mean that it can't be harmful. And so just like other household hazardous wastes or um, pretty intensive cleaners, you're going to store it up and away, up and away from pets, up and away from kids. Um, with our marketing these days, the cleaning products are made to look fun. They want to make us buy them and clean. Um, and so guess what? Those are also appealing to kiddos. Um, and so if you've got grandkids or neighbors coming over, even if they're not living in your home, think about storage and place it up and away. Um, Finally, my last tip is just to say, use room temperature water um, because you don't want to create uh, gases when you're diluting something. So make sure that you don't have it on scalding hot or you haven't boiled water to mix in with something that needs diluted. Um, and last uh, but not least, again, a reminder that we're here. We're here if you need us um, and we'd love to answer your questions. I usually Usually receive those and then I pass them off to the technical experts um, who can give me the background on it. So inside this building that you're seeing, they've got the things like fume hoods and testing strips. They've got their, their manual after manual of, of what is what and what is safe and, and what changes after so many years or does it dry? Is it different as a crystal? Um, and so inside this building, they've got tools um, to help them figure out um, how to advise us in the general public. Um, also, if you're in Lincoln and Lancaster County, please use our site. Um, come by and see us. We're open every Wednesday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. We've got appointments available at has2go.com. But that doesn't mean that if you're outside of the county, we don't want to hear from you because um, we know that your health impacts our health and we are interrelated. And so please, please, don't be shy about reaching out to us. Um, so that is all I have prepared. Big thoughts, anything that you wanna share before we go to questions? Um, no, basically uh, I, would, I would just, just remember if, if, you, if you took chemistry in, in high school even, um, maybe even earlier than that, that uh, you always want to mix your chemical into the water 
um, unless it's a water reactive, which none of these are. Um, you don't want to fill your water into your container. And another tip would be make the smallest container that you can possible to get the job done because whenever you mix it, dilute it, it's, it's, it's going to be weakened and its effectiveness is going to be decreased. And as it sits there till the next week, the next week, the next week, you know, they, they go bad. So mix, mix, you know, mix, buy those little bottles so it's the little spray bottles, make sure you label them and mix your product into water. And just in general, only mix a product with water. Don't mix with other things unless you know what you're doing. And uh, all of these, all of these uh, solutions that Sarah has mentioned, um, they're all single single uh, compound solutions, you know, so there's one thing in water and uh, um, they're all as they are relatively safe, but you start mixing them together. Um, and uh, don't be afraid to get innovative with the elbow grease. Um, you know, you can buy a pretty cheap uh, rechargeable screw gun uh, and buy a whole assortment of scrubby things that you can mount on there and you, you can you can clean little spaces you can clean big spaces um, and it's it, you know it's the it's the cleaning to get all the scale and the rust and the mineralization off is what you need like in a shower um, you gotta get all that off because if you disinfect it, it it's just going to have all that crud on there still I, I've seen the power Thank you. brush times, but I haven't gone for it. But maybe after the conversation, it's time for our household to put that together. Uh -oh. Thank you. I, we do have a few questions. Um, one of them has to do with what <clears throat> what would be a safe cleaner for a septic tank? It gets a lot trickier, right? Because you're you're not going through that wastewater treatment plant. Um, yeah, that, that well, I don't have a septic tank. I never have, but I know people that have had septic tanks and have had problems. They're usually caused by too much material, uh, you know, that doesn't break down. So paper towels and tampons and uh, excess yeah. hair and things like that. So the best way to avoid any sort of blockage or clog in your septic system or your sanitary sewer is to keep out foreign material. So strainers uh, and hair catchers and things like that. So don't let it go down. If it does go down, try to grab it with, with the augers or the little tong things or the, the you stick down there, try to grab it and uh, you know, then if you can't get it cleared yourself, it's probably further down the line. But in a septic tank, you would not want to add um, the corrosive. So the uh, acid drain cleaners or the the hydro the uh, the, uh, the basic the um, basic drain cleaners. And um, Sarah referred to that earlier. You don't want to mix two different types of drain cleaners because one could be an acid and one could be a base and you don't know. So if you try one and it doesn't work, uh, either call a plumber or run flushing water down there and then maybe try again in a few days, depending on your mm -hmm. system and how bad it, it's clogged. But ideally you would just, um, you know, not keep adding different chemicals down there. How about if you're just wanting to clean in your household and you know it's going to mess up the tank? What kind of products? Would something like vinegar, is that going to mess up oh, your yeah. system or? The vinegar and hydrogen peroxide at these concentrations shouldn't kill your, your, your biologic growth that's going on in there. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, if you poured the whole bottle down there, you, you 
could affect the microbes. Uh, and I could do some more research and get back to you specifically. Um, I see you in our, our chat and that's a great thing for me to know as well. Um, and especially, uh, so again, within, within that realm that we work in environmental health, you know, we're constantly out and about in the county looking at, at wells and um, septic tanks. That's, that's kind of our realm when it comes to water. So let me get back to you specifically, but I think in general, we know, hey, when you're talking about cleaning, we're not talking about dumping jugs of vinegar down. So that should be a safe bet. Hydrogen peroxide, we're not dumping the whole bottle. We're spraying it on surfaces, letting it do its thing for 68 minutes before wiping it. Um, and so that should be a safe bet too. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, what would be a good way to clean a sink drainer? Strainer, mm -hmm. sink strainer. Are we thinking that it's got a lot of like dirt and grime on it? Or are we thinking that it gets filled with food bits or hair and toothpaste? Or are you food particles. Food particles, okay. Food particles. food particles are what we're looking for. Um, I would still say soap and water are a good bet. Um, so if you've got some like, greasy things you need to get off, that's when I throw in some baking soda and I would give it a scrub. Um, it seems like a not very technical presentation when a lot of our answers are like, scrub with soap and water. Um, but that's yeah. what the science says. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if that was not exactly the answer you were hoping for. John, John is soapy and I'm not trying to promote any certain brand, but it's, now I, I've tried green and blue and I've tried all the colors and they all work good to me, so. Uh -huh. um, where do you purchase those safer, cleaner products that the CDC developed? Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, it's becoming more and more prevalent on the shelves. So if you, again, we're speaking on behalf of city, county and government, we don't promote uh, or encourage any particular product or store. Um, but, you know, most of your, your big box stores are going to have some safer choice products. So you pop into hy V's cleaning selection, which is even smaller than maybe um, a big box store, and you're still going to be able to find some. What you want to do uh, is you want to look for uh, that label. And I, I love this image that the EPA created, but it's a little bit uh, misleading because that safer choice emblem is like other emblems, it's small on there. So it's not gonna take up your whole bottle. It's not gonna look like that. Um, yeah, near that UPC, bottom corners are usually where it's located. And the other thing, if you are someone who loves to tool around on the internet, um, a Google search of EPA um, along with Safer Choice, you will find lots of information on it, so. Well, I don't think we have any other questions. I, I know you don't want to recommend a, a brand name, I'm assuming, for a laundry product. Is so that correct? Let me, let me say for laundry, um, I will say that our family was using uh, like soap nuts are a product that became more prevalent, and it is truly just from a plant, a nut. And it, it worked pretty well. Um, but I also have a spouse who is a personal trainer and really makes his clothes dirty and a toddler and a nine-year-old. And so eventually, and we're doing cloth diapers. And so eventually we said, ah, you know, we, we would try, um, we do use like a vinegar boost sometimes. Um, no matter what product you're using, if, if it's the smell issue, um, throw in a half cup of vinegar uh, there close to the rinse cycle. It's great because it takes away the extra soap residue because that's the, the kicker with cleaning and soap is that sometimes you get a, a residue left behind, which is why I think so many places went to that extreme, like all purpose cleaner 
that is now impact poorly impacting our health. So I would say go with a fragrance free detergent if you decide that the soap just isn't enough. Um, and then, you know, make that work. So our, our family was at a soap and we shifted to a detergent, which is a chemically altered soap, basically. Um, so fragrance free when you're looking for laundry products is a good beginning place. Um, let me just see here. Oh, yes. Look at that. Thank you. Throwing in that oh, website. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. EPA.gov backslash safer choice. Um, and they're getting better at communicating. I think that's kind of the problem. Um, and that, that's what we've discovered here in our, in our health department too. We have really smart people who are incredible subject experts. Uh -huh. But we can't throw all that information out into the world or we're just overwhelmed. Yeah. So I think EPA got better and they were like, hey, we have to have a label. We have to have something for people to look for, like the safer choice. Um, and so dig in there. It's getting better. It's getting clearer. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Sarah and Ralph. I mean, this is really good practical information. I feel like I've really learned a lot today. Um, I don't see any other questions in our chat box. So I think we'll go ahead and, and close out. We will put up a survey. Um, Amanda will do that, I think. And we appreciate everybody being here today. And again, I don't see any, and especially we appreciate you taking your time. Oh, there is our survey and we really appreciate you doing that because it helps with planning. Uh, but Ralph and Sarah, thank you so much. <laughs> and we'll probably be calling on you again in the future. Okay. Please, please. We're here. Okay. Thank you. Uh, bye. bye.